the Maasai culture has been there since ages. We are from that society and we believe change must come from within and we don't have to wait uh, an angel from heaven to come and do that. We are those angels and we have to go out there and be that changed society. In our society culturally, um, a boy is termed as you know, a man, even when he's like, even when he's still not Very born. Young. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but a girl, you know, they still are termed as like a little girl, babies, even when a they little are, girl, even when, when they are, are even really like, yeah. Yeah. you know, over the uh, 18 years. You know? yeah. This is the end of Gym Podcast with Sonyanga Olengais. Welcome to the End FGM Podcast. My name is Jeremiah Kipainoi. I spend time with change makers who are making an impact in Kenya and beyond. Each week, we listen to incredible stories of ordinary people just like you making a difference. They share their successes, failures, and what they are learning along the way. Thank you for being with me today. Let's get started. Today, we talk about empowering girls, creating agents of change to reach their peers. I am seated with Sonyanga Olengais, a Maasai warrior from Laikipia in northern Kenya, where FGM is still rampant. Through film and cricket, Sonyanga is empowering the Maasai ladies to speak out about FGM. Welcome to the sixth episode of the End FGM Podcast, Sonyanga. Thank you very much, and I'm glad to be in your podcast. Why media and why sports? Uh, first of all, uh, I'm a media enthusiast, and I love telling stories, either through uh, audio and visual. And also, media is a very good platform for us to uh, empower our societies and tell our own stories instead of just... Uh, depending on other people to come and tell our stories. So to me, it's about uh, uh, being among the indigenous people who use uh, this platform, which is actually um, a main important element in the current world. So that's why I'm doing media. And at the same time, uh, it's my passion and I love it. And uh, that's why I did choose that. But then when it comes to sports, um, I normally wanted to be, you know, to keep fit and also to use sports as a platform to empower my society and to bring the youth together as a way of uh, just making them to be active in one way or another instead of just, you know, staying back at home. And you play a very unique uh, kind of sport, cricket. Uh, just a unique background of how you also started uh, mentoring these girls on playing cricket. Being a cricket player and the captain of the Maasai Cricket Warriors, uh, that really gave me a platform to uh, practice the game to a good level. And also I wanted also to use that uh, platform to give these uh, ladies in my society a chance to also play cricket and also use it as a very important tool to speak about uh, you know, the issues that are affecting them you know, empowering, you know, our, their own, their own selves and also using it as a way to reach out to the, to the world and even keep fit is very important. When did you begin this journey of trying to fight female genital mutilation and does it affect you personally? FGM, first of all, um, it was practiced in my village and even my own family, like my elder sisters. Um, it's, it's a way of culture. So I, being a culture enthusiast, uh, I love like a lot of part of the culture, but then there's a little part of it that we need to, you know, put it out. And FGM, unfortunately, is one of them. Also, um, being an issue in our in my society, um, I actually grew up knowing that um, FGM is good. But then, with the help of my brothers and even learning in school, uh, gave me a good voice and kind of empowerment for me to join my brothers and to speak up uh, about these issues. And now with cricket is a sport that we're actually using to empower and uh, stamp out uh, FGM and even early marriages in our societies. 
um, it's a good way for us to just uh, recognize that we have a beautiful culture. But then at the same time, we need to uh, eradicate the retrogressive part of it. What were the circumstances that led to you beginning fighting this vice? Um, I am from uh, a society in the village where um, I grew up uh, with my sisters and with my brothers. And, you know, with that in mind, I actually remember and, uh, you know, my brothers also speaking about, you know, uh, the importance of our sisters continuing uh, with school and also, you know, seeing and maybe traveling the world and even schooling. And we see or I personally like saw a lot of, you know, girls that are actually not from my society. You know, I school with them. But then the question is, uh, why are they actually why there are no a lot of Maasai ladies in, you know, going to school and, you know, prospering to the next level. You know, so that, uh, among other issues, uh, propagated my way of uh, now having that urge of, you know, getting, you know, to be involved in bringing a, a positive change. Because I believe that we were actually taken to school because uh, we were expected to be the one to come back and change the society. We are the agent of positive change in our society. And if that doesn't work, then there's no need for us to have gone to school at the first point. So all those issues actually, and also like with the civilization and the way we are, you know, getting informed at a very high speed, you know, with the technology and, you know, equality, you know, of everyone in the society. So that's why I personally started and then uh, with the help of my brother, they have actually even started before me. Um, and also with the cricket warriors and now with the cricket ladies, even the young ones, like the young boys in the villages, you know, growing up knowing that we are from an equal, we are yeah, for an equal society uh, where everyone is supposed to enjoy, you know, all the equal rights equally. You have very unique ways of approaching the fight against uh, female genital mutilation because you involve these young people in driving change. In most cases, we see um, uh, people, mostly adults, being the ones leading the, the campaign against female genital mutilation. You use sports and empowering these girls using cricket, which is a very unique game and also not, not a very common um, phenomenon among girls in Laikipi and among the Masa in general. And through cricket, they are able to play and other girls are able to see them. How does cricket help NFGM? Uh, you will actually uh, uh, accept with me that uh, we are from a society where sport belong to men. And uh, that having that in mind, if we actually don't create platform for the ladies that are in that society, to use them as a way to empower them, then it is hard for us to empower these ladies. And now that, uh, you know, with the cricket, uh, we are giving them equal chances as the Masai Cricket Warriors and to go out there and use this sport as a way to speak out. This is like their voice. Because through this, you know, a lot of people get to come uh, and, and see them play. And also... Uh, like with the interviews, for example, like the, the the media coverages, it reaches to a lot of people. And these girls now get a chance to speak out. Because when they're just out there in the village, what they do is their normal duties, like just cleaning, washing the utensils, you know, getting, growing, firewood. getting the firewood and staying Fetching home. Water, yeah. But now with cricket, it's uh, the first step for us here to use it as a way to like encourage these girls that, you know, sport actually can be a talent and it can be a career uh, that you can use it. And it's not only men who can play sport. And actually the ladies are, are really playing very well. Uh, we have some playing like in the universities or well, in the universities or well, in high school. They are doing well alongside now crickets, you know, I, I mean film, uh, like in selling cinema films. So all those, you know, together, you know, uh, uh, brought forward to these ladies is actually making them. And even actually I received some um, message from the school 
where, where the, some of the ladies are schooling that we should actually produce more and more films because the girls are really talented mm-hmm. so to me uh receiving such a message from you know the teachers and a response uh was really um a good encouragement and spirit that makes me to continue and see what we can do it's really working and in our society you can't really like uh, now here someone talking about um you know openly speaking about forcing the uh, young ones to undergo the, the cut mm-hmm. it's it's working and also for us we you mean be, people do not no longer speak about they no longer speak about they that. do it in secret yeah at some point but most of the times the ladies are actually uh speaking out they themselves and they are even reporting their parents uh, to to the chiefs when they when they fear that uh, something is cooking but you know this is a society and you know it's hard to change a society it's really hard that's why the Maasai culture has been there since ages and but for us we are from the society and we believe change must come from within and we don't have to wait uh, an angel from heaven to come and do that we are those angels and we have to go out there and be that uh, person that must bring the change to that society with the realization that cricket is the ultimate uh, game for us to use uh, it as a as a tool to empower the society is actually when we realize that the most important thing is involving these girls warriors uh, mothers fathers village elders uh, the local government authorities so when you bring all those together and actually make sure that there is that uh, aspect of uh, involving so that they actually feel uh, feel that uh, they are part of this and this thing is not just affecting us or maybe it's not only sonyanga who is seeing this or maybe it's not only any other person who is seeing this but it's a thing that they can see in their own eyes and um as young as maybe 5 years 6 years and even maybe around 10 years that that's when uh you know you start now to introduce this uh kind of one one classes like basic basic understanding and explanation to them uh so that they understand the importance of uh that five year old boy and that five year old girl having the same equal right because in our society culturally um a boy is termed as you know a man even when he's like <laughs> even when he's still not Very born young, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but a girl you know they still are termed as like a little girl babies, even when they are girls, even when they, they are really, even like yeah you know over the, uh, the 18 years you know yeah. so we actually want to bring that into a halt and we have to do it right now and that's what we are doing and also to speak about involving them uh like through film for example uh, uh, I actually like founded uh, like school selling in a films where we actually um, you know let girls tell the story obviously i direct them and then make sure that uh, every episode is relevant and we try to make it fun so that people can watch while at the same time using it as a platform to uh, send the messages of empowerment and encouragement to a lot of people out there in masai selinken means ladies and selinken is a beautiful name yeah <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah so for me is like when when you when, when you try to look into a masai society like a typical masai society it's really hard to see a girl expressing around. herself exactly and yeah. even addressing a lot of people and in this world it's through a virtual world you know a, a digital world online platform yeah. and now a lot of people really are waiting for the next episode a lot of people wrote, know, i have i yeah. watched some of those <laughs> films and I, i'll honestly <laughs> say that um i haven't seen such things among the masai people yeah. uh, of course where i come from myself yeah. Yeah. and um 
it is very unique because they're able to express so much of their voice from the within their communities exactly. and express it in a way that's very comical yeah and also <laughs> and also reach out to people who would not um want to listen to content that is in english or in swahili yeah so i think honestly um it is not because you're on, on this show <laughs> true true i believe i believe i think it's it's one of 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 the most effective ways i have seen uh, to try to reach even if it's not to convert them but yeah, to reach to reach out the Maasai people yeah uh using comical reliefs mm-hmm. and the girls are excellent yeah, in it yes i've now. seen that and i speak that language so uh, yeah. i just had to say that yeah yeah thank you very much for that yeah so um now because now you know the girls that are participating into this and as i said a lot of people really, really wrote t- to me and they wanted to be part of it but then you know Maasai land is very vast it's mm. very expensive like to bring people from different corners of the world and different areas like down to Tanzania up north to Samburu and down uh, to up to like Marsabit. Yadu, Marsabit yeah you know narrow mm. you know like keep here it's very vast but i'm sure that will happen in in a very short time to come i believe that but then uh, w- uh i just hope that uh, it's going to continue and i hope that a lot of people will come on board and we work out something this allows the girls to be able to address some of these issues though sometimes very jokingly mm-hmm. but they have a voice to be able to speak and be heard without being interrupted exactly and have a space to be able to express their voice even in front of communities yeah we've had poems we've had songs we've had schools presenting in public in public um in public places mm-hmm. uh, like chief barazas yeah. or on important days and they air out their voice saying that you should stop uh, cutting the girls but on a one-on-one level mm-hmm. does it have an impact if you go to maybe to the theaters and maybe this uh, national holidays in places where the main focus is not uh, the subject which is ending uh, fgm then it might not be that serious like just go direct to the point and speak about empowerment you know um uh, civic education as i know you're an expert in that field <laughs> <laughs> um and uh, speaking about uh you know bringing the change that you know we always dreamed of uh so in that way we will and also like you know involving them because if you don't involve them that's the main important thing if you don't involve them then they will feel that these are just your issues that you're driving maybe out of some something that is behind it but when you involve them then they will feel part of it and they will actually change i know your background is communication electronic media yeah. and you make films yourself yeah. you direct and produce and shoot and you do all those things and coming from a a community where um where traditional ways reigned where passing of information was mostly told by old people and young people are mostly much more of li- listening mm-hmm. and now you are trying to bring in another aspect of people being able to tell their own stories from 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 young people now encouraging the old people of course to speak out and also trying to reach people just using the media as a, uh, as a medium um to have conversations that would our uh, that would otherwise be very difficult to have why then um did you find it important to to involve these girls not necessarily about fgm but in production of such films why why did you find it necessary uh first of all i really i've always wanted to produce the local content the mass content because they are lacking they are not actually in the online platform like uh, well produced uh, content that tell our story told in our beautiful Maasai language and um now having gone to school and specialized in electronic media communication and now I'm um, specializing in film production and documentaries now it was my time and also work with the you know the people like you you know we've been working for a long time in like producing like the local content so uh that you know made me more to really do it instead of just you know waiting you know because you know with all the expertise 
and even the equipments. And I can tell you all those uh, productions, I actually made them through my cell phone. Your phone? Yeah, my phone. So that shows that you actually don't have, don't need to have a very powerful gear, like a very big camera. Yeah, you can use that if you have, but then uh, you can only use what is, um, what you have. Yeah. And even the quality, you know, the end product will more or less be the same. Um, so to me, it was about uh, telling our own stories because we have a lot of content and we have differences in us, you know, good stories that we can tell. And since we are the one who are telling this story, we will actually tell, us, uh, tell it 100%, you know, very genuine and very original. So to me, it was about telling our stories, you know, letting the world know that, you know, there are a lot of beautiful Maasai stories out there told by the Maasai. Are there any successes on using media and sports to end FGM? There are a lot of uh, successes uh, because now we see uh, girls in my thinking realizing that there is more than just, you know, going to school and study. There are a lot of careers that you can actually develop, like maybe acting and expressing it their own selves. To me, that's more important because that's self-development and that's what we need in this world. Also, uh, through uh, cricket and ending FGM, now my society is changing as much as other societies that are actually seeing our work. And so to me, that is a lot of success. And also, um, you know, continuing with school personally. So that that's success. So you said continuing with school. Yeah. Um, is that part of the of the strategy or, or no, an ending? Not FGM? really. Not really. But in a way, I always uh, wanted to progress academically, so that now I am a powerful person in terms of understanding what is happening. In, 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 in this world because if you are not exposed to realities in this world then it's really hard for you to try to solve these issues because they are evolving and they are changing every day so you really have to understand the current tactics and ways of expressing yourself for you to deal uh, these issues the correct way and so me developing my own self academically is important but then what is more important is for me to use what I've gained in school and with other platforms and forums that I get opportunities to attend. Um, what I use that, that knowledge to do, like in terms of changing my city, is very important. Because, you know, in the mass, we say the eye that leaves the village is further. Meaning uh, when you go out there, whatever you learn while out there, uh, you will get more enlightened and you have to come back and when you come back you really have to now convert what you learned into something meaningful in relation to your society did you have you ever faced challenges um in this quest to try bring out such sensitive issues in your community this is not an easy path to undertake, uh, having in mind that we are uh, from a culture where, you know, ways and, um, I mean, ways of our culture are followed to the latter. And, you know, we have a culture deep rooted to our own selves, into our genes. And I'm sure being a Maasai and you're a Maasai too, all these issues, there's no time that you can even like stay a week without thinking that you are Maasai yeah, and without true. thinking that you really have to protect this culture. And so, you know, it's it's hard to go out there now uh, and tell these elders that, you know, FGM is not important. But culturally, FGM is important. So it's like you're now the traitor. In to other, them culturally. Yeah, to the culturally. Mm. And in a way, they might term you as Latin says, persona non grata. You, know? <laughs> <laughs> you are unwanted in that society. Mm -hmm. And so now that is the time you realize that it's about time. It's, a, it's now 
or never. But then you really don't have to put on like the heavy gear and 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 you know armor yourself with the, with the arrows and 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 the what and the machete and get out there and fight. No, it's just about using the strategy, you know, understanding, explaining, you know, uh, let them understand what is this that you're trying to um, to bring in into being. What is this that you're trying to uh, challenge us or you're trying to persuade to us for us to change? You know, so uh, you have really to be very careful on wordings and, you know, uh, w- what you say. Because, you, you know, obviously at most of the times, the young people are not allowed to address to the elders unless on special occasions. And that includes culturally. Them. And that includes the... The definitely, men. definitely. The, the young, the young, the young ones normally have like representatives, you know. And when you, when in in such cases now, sensitive cases, it's about you know calling for barazas and the council of elders now coming in and listen to you. But then you don't just go, you know, speaking and you know, it will have to involve a protocol where, you know, there are issues that have to be followed, and. For you to do that, you must be prepared and you must know that uh, it's not going to be successful and it might be successful. And not everyone will agree because it all depends on, now at the end of the day, every individual, you know. But the most important thing is persuading the entire elders and the society to accept the change. Is there a, 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 is there a situation where girls took it upon themselves to defend other girls due to probably empowerment that they received or the enlightenment that they are able to to get? There are a lot of successes because you know these girls school in the local uh, primary schools and secondary schools and others school in the, some school outside. And so normally, because these girls are schooling, they have to make sure that they enroll and recruit other girls and they actually speak uh, to them. And there are some cases where they, some, you know, some little girls, they had like to report the cases to, to the chief. And, you know, the chief actually, you know, came with the, with the police and they disrupted the ceremony where one girl was to be, uh, to undergo the cut. And that was a success. And uh, now with such a case, it actually uh, did brought in a lot of fear to the society. The that, girls. That, I mean, I mean the, with that one case, yeah. it actually brought in a lot of fear and caution to, you know, the, to, to anyone who wanted to force their uh, little ones into, you know, to undergo the cut or maybe early marriages. So that's, to me, that's success. And now the rate of girls now enrolling to school, that's another success. It it might be an indirect success, but the number of girls attending uh, primary schools and those are proceeding to high school is actually increasing uh, in relation to the past years. It ends up being building role models in the communities where girls who are so much used to life as a traditional Maasai girl growing up, looking after lambs and, and, and kids, as, as, as boys also look after goats and sheep, now transist, transiting to girls who are much more hands-on to technologies, who are not willing to be able to go to school and are able to compete with boys. Now what is actually happening is that the old type of cultural thinking or their school of thought used to be um, girls you know to maintain their culture you know accepting to undergo the cut that used to be the way but now the girls are actually uh, adopting and they are taking it at a very fast rate uh, that you know those who are not going to school are outdated one and so they don't want to be part of that and also that means they wouldn't want to to be forced to undergo the cut because that means uh, she might be the only one who has undergone the cut. Mm-hmm. And it in, in one or another, it looks outdated and 
you know what happens in the ladies world i don't know what happens but i believe no one <laughs> want to be associated to you know in the progressing part mm-hmm. of life but mm-hmm. they all want to be seen as uh elites and uh victors uh in the uh, realm okay so uh, what i what i get from what you're saying is that um you're making it fashionable to go to school not to get circumcised and that was something that was not fashionable at some point um we've had cases where we've seen even women demonstrate saying that we want our children to be cut because we also cut and that's part of our culture so now it's much more fashionable not to be cut than being cut because they've seen people definitely. Who, who are thriving yeah definitely now there's a lot of examples and i might uh quote but i really don't want to quote now <laughs> um and we give them as examples to you know encourage these girls because in the current world is about living a good life no one would want to live in a desperate life where you depend 100% to your husband and so that would be a shame now we want you to be among you know that productive uh, lady who will actually come back and help their parents and even help uh, bring a society to a level that um, that is needed and so it's it's a challenge to them you know and uh, they are doing very well and i just hope that they will continue to do that and they'll continue you know getting out there and be the agents of uh, positive change what are the lessons learned over time uh while trying to empower these young girls both in cricket and and also in 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 creation of these films them as actors them as producers in a nutshell i would say that involving is the number one thing because then these ladies or even the warriors or the society and the elders will actually believe that they are part of this and they will do it with one heart and also i've learned that uh, participation and uh, trying to learn with them you know work with them be there be understanding listen you know those are very very important uh, aspects and the things that i have learned and also another thing is um just keep doing because it's not easy and don't think that this is uh this is an easy path you will face a lot of challenges and so you have to be decided and you have to know that uh it's a very rough and unpleasant path, path to undertake and don't be so op- optimistic that you will receive change 100% because uh you might be so um it's called what disappointed disappointed mm. yes as we bring this to a close i know we have so much to talk about mm-hmm. especially in trying to bring up the voice of the girl child in some of the most remote places in kenya and even beyond but we only have some time to do this as we bring this to a close because i've learned so much too um and i hope that people can keep be able to keep up these conversations your contacts um if you are willing to share yeah sure um on facebook i am by sonyanga olengais and uh, also instagram at sonyanga1 and then also i post a lot of stuff on youtube which is called this is sonyanga oh and i hope that's the place where you'll, you'll be able to find definitely selinkin ma just go to youtube uh selinkin selinkin m r s e l e n k e n m r meaning e that is a uh ma m a a films okay yes and they'll be able to see some of the girls they will see a, a lot of girls and it's fun and actually all of them are from the masai cricket ladies amazing yes amazing all right so that was sonia golengais uh the masai warrior from northern kenya in laikipia and in the stretch where the masai live as we as he had told us before fgm is still a problem that needs to be dealt with but the approach that he is taking is towards a creative way of doing things not just the traditional way of holding barazas and 
and having separate meetings is trying to bring change, giving the voice to sections of the, of the community to be able to see the essence of not going through some practices, not just FGM alone, but being able to show these people that people can go far, children can be, can be able to go far when they go to school uh, by setting role models, girls being able to go to transit to university, set up a, a, set up a bar to the other girls who do not think that it's possible for a girl to get to form for graduate, go to university, get a job and employ people in their communities. So thank you very much, Sonyango Lengais, for joining us here at the NFGM podcast. It's an honor having you here. Thank you very much and keep doing good. Thank you very much. Thank you for listening to the NFGM podcast. My name is Jeremiah Kipainoi. Today you are listening to Sonyanga Olengai, a Maasai warrior from Lekipia in Northern Kenya. You can get bonus materials, notes, and much more at www.kipainoi.com. K I P A I N O I dot com. Please remember, we all can do something. Go out and make a difference, for we all have a responsibility to make this world a better place. Goodbye.